This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your Raspberry Pi with our all-in-one arcade kit using genuine Sanwar arcade parts. So, did you get it? Yes, I got it. It was kind awesome. of difficult, but I pulled some strings and got it for you. Excellent. I'm sure Neil's going to love it. When I was a kid, I played Mario on this with my friends. It was a long time ago, but it was good memories. I hope Neil loves it. I'm sure he will. Thank you so much, Naomi. You're welcome. So, I know a good place for shipping in Kwa Chang Bay. Uh, let me show you. Let's go. So, uh, he says about $50. That is uh, $50. How many pounds? How many RMB? How many? Uh, 306, 300 kwai, yes, 300 kwai. Pounds. Yeah, 30 pounds. Oh yeah, 30 pounds. Yeah. So $50, 30 pounds. Good to go. Well, thank you. Hello, Cave Dwellers. Jackie Chan and I. We're not so different. We both do our own stunts. And we're both into computers. And this package has come all the way from China, with thanks to Winston and Naomi, who we saw in the intro there. And inside is a computer with Jackie Chan's face emblazoned across the bit. I can't wait to find out more. So let's tear it open and see what's inside. So why would someone send a computer halfway around the world to share with us all? There is of course a story to tell which goes deeper than the hardware itself, and like a Chinese dragon has many twists and turns to explore. The celebrity endorsement is fun, but there's much more to it than a young Jackie Chan in a sharp suit here. So let's start with what we actually have in the box, then we'll explore just why it exists, and we'll fire it up and see what we can do with it. You don't need to read Chinese to understand the marketing. An English word blaster cartridge gives us a clue as to the machine having an educational nature at face value. As does the full-sized keyboard, which is not just a keyboard but the entire machine. The system is housed inside a wedge keyboard design, and colourful letters fall from the sky behind Jackie, further emphasising that this is for learning. And it's made by the company Shabawang, or Subo to give it its English name, and they were founded in 1987. Our model is an SB926. Inside the box, the first thing we see is 102 keys on the keyboard with both English and Chinese symbols, with a power button at the top right hand side and a cartridge slot hidden beneath the flap at the top of the keyboard. The keys are reassuringly worn though, suggesting that perhaps it did help someone with their education, if indeed that's what they used it for, because the next clue as to this machine's alter ego are two joypads, with a style very similar to the PC Engine or the original Famicom. Cartridges are the means through which programs are loaded via a slot at the top of the keyboard, and the little English writing that's on them shows English Word Blaster and F Basic. We'll be taking a look at both, and it'd be very interesting if that is a basic programming language, because I can't yet see any way that you would save your programs. And Winston and Naomi have thrown in some fun extras here. We've got some Chinese cash bearing the face of Chairman Mao, some of Winston's business cards from a trip he made across the US with a Corvette on YouTube, he's a very busy man, and a mystery cartridge with no case, definitely something to check out. So you may be asking, what does this all mean and why does this machine exist? Let's take a look at the bigger picture. The People's Republic of China, or PRC, is located in East Asia. It's home to 1.4 billion people and it's a one-party state. That one ruling party is the Communist Party of China, or CCP. Chairman Mao, who we saw on the banknote, was the founding father of the CCP when it was established in 1949 following the Chinese Civil War. He was committed to his values known as the Mao Zedong Thought. Values which, along with Marxism, Leninism For Mother Russia. and other socialist ideologies, the CCP is still committed to, and many of which aligned with the Soviet Union until its dissolution in 1991. The CCP has since established working relations with other democracies regardless of their ideologies. 
It's a deep and rich history which is beyond the scope of our episode today, but what it all means is that China and what's consumed in China is managed, controlled and often censored by the single ruling party, in line with the message the CCP wants its people to receive, or indeed not. Entertainment is of course subject to such scrutiny, including the video games industry, so much so that between the millennium and 2015, games consoles were banned in China because, amongst other things, they were considered to have an adverse effect on education in young people. And with a one-child-per-family policy in place until 2013, you didn't get a second shot at educating your kids, or kid. Even after the ban was lifted, games were heavily censored, as we can see in this Chinese electronics store shot in 2017 by Winston. This is what you see here. This shelf is the grand total. So Xbox One games, I can see like five. Just, just Dance, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Halo, whichever one. Another Romance of the Three Kingdoms derivative and Final Fantasy. That is it. That is it. So guys, good luck if you're a gamer in China. It's a familiar story, and while our parents may not have been Chairman Mao or his successors, we were often denied video game time in the name of education. A sentiment which, as you can imagine, ran extremely deep in China, even before the console ban. And so the solution to this was the educational computer. There was a key difference though. In the West we had the Apple II, things like the Acorn Electron here and the ZX Spectrum. Sir Clive in fact got quite annoyed that people played games on his ZX Spectrum instead of doing serious business and educational tasks. Subo, they took it from a different perspective. They reversed the whole thing and they started out with a games machine, a Nintendo Famicom or NES as I knew it, and turned that into an educational machine. Under the scholarly veneer, there is an all-out games machine, a Famicom clone or Famiclone as they're known, an unauthorised Nintendo Entertainment System. And the best thing was, when you were trying to convince your parents to buy one for you, Jackie Chan was right there, and he was on your side to convince them with you. So let's plug it in and educate ourselves. My NES has composite out, but the original Famicom is RF only, so the Subor offers an immediate advantage over the original. One point then to the Subor. No hacking required here for a nice display. There's one additional port on the rear, and that's a DB25 parallel port to which you could hook up a printer and print from a word processor. The only other ports are arguably the most important. It's two joypad ports, one on either side of the keyboard. And that's all there is to it. There aren't any other ports hidden anywhere around this system. So I guess we should fire it up. We'll take a quick look at the English blaster cart then. And immediately we can see copyright, which is quite laughable considering it's a cloned console and the year 1994. The cardboard box shows that my system was produced in 1995. That's a full 12 years after the NES was released in Japan. In fact, it was the beginning of the Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation generation. Now what you're seeing here is me attempting to play the various educational games on the cartridge. The first I tried was a Chinese to English translation challenge, which I managed with the sneaky assistance of Google Translate on my phone. And I was rewarded for my efforts by this man, presumably me, riding a dolphin. Marvellous stuff. Other challenges were more easy to understand, typing out English sentences including hello, how are you, good morning and sit down. There's also a game to replace the highlighted word with a more appropriate one, which actually seems like quite a jump in difficulty from simply typing hello or how are you. And there's a simple fill in the missing letters game, where once again we learn to greet people, ask them how they are and demand that they sit down. I think you get the idea. English Word Blaster is a mixture of mini games to drill English words into your eager Chinese brain. It's great for reading and writing, but the limited capabilities and storage, of course, mean you won't be performing verbal drills or hearing much in the way of recorded speech. There is a little speech when you turn the system on. And I'm reliably informed that that translates to Subo is never ending happiness or joy. Sit down, you will enjoy this console. So on the next cartridge we have another selection of educational delights which are not focused on learning English. 
They include a calculator, which calculates. A letter blasting game to test how quickly you can hit a key on the keyboard. Musical scales to help you identify notes. Fox hunting, piano playing. Hang on, is that rabbit making the fox eat his friend there? Perhaps he has myxomatosis. And finally, F basic. Basic, the foundation of nearly every 8-bit micro, baked into the ROM and ready to be used as soon as it's powered on. And here it is on a Famiclone. It's not unique though, there was an official basic pack called Family Basic way back in 1983 which included a keyboard. The F in this F basic though doesn't stand for family, it stands for floating point. Despite not having a floating point unit on the system's 6502 CPU, F basic allows floating point calculations to be performed in software. It's possible, but it's slow, very slow based on the CPU's 1.79 MHz speed or thereabouts and the aforementioned lack of a maths coprocessor. Here I'm calculating an approximation of pi using what's known as the Monte Carlo method. There's a link for more information in the description and it has a good long think about the calculation. before eventually it spits out a result. And no, I haven't found a way to save our programs, so when power is lost, your coding is gone. The official Family Basic Pack did have a cassette drive you could plug into the keyboard and save your programs. Perhaps there's the equivalent for this, but I haven't found it. Now I don't know about you, but I'm all schooled out. The styling of the included cartridges do look familiar, especially the one with TV game cartridge written on it. I've seen this style casing before on fake Famicom games. My European NES cartridge is different in style, and the connectors are different, I can't put this into the machine. But my Japanese Famicom version of Wagon Land certainly looks similar. And sure enough, it slots right in. And now, school's out. This is a Famiclone through and through. Put in your genuine or less genuine Famicom cart and you can forget about the keyboard entirely. Get your buddy over on the second joypad and stun them with the gaming technology of 1983. Alright, it was a little bit out of date, but then so were China's former communist friends in Eastern Europe, as we recently discovered on my channel. In the 90s the former Soviet Union were enamoured by the ZX Spectrum, also from the 80s, and Subor was the second biggest seller of Famiclones in the former USSR behind Dendi. So it was pretty normal to be playing 8-bit titles in the mid-90s in China and indeed other countries. And one cartridge everyone in China owned, I now own two. It's this naked PCB which it turns out is the 9-in-1 cartridge. Nine memorable Famicom games on one cartridge, including classics like Super Mary. Remember that one? We've also got 1944 and Gallagher, which both benefit greatly from the auto-fire button on the joypad. And Contra, a hard-as-nails classic which Jackie Chan would surely approve of. Now I feel educated. So I think after that demonstration you get the idea of its marketed purpose and its genuine purpose as a games machine. I was really surprised to find out that Subor still exists. Until very recently they had a store selling knockoff PSPs which run Game Boy Advance carts and terrible Wii clones. And they still sell those products online. Just look at these. Everything from systems designed to look like a Wii, which play Android versions of Fruit Ninja, through to Famiclones with nearly authentic styling to the originals. The NES as a gaming system still lives on in China and you can still buy a brand new system to play those games on. Although perhaps a reflection of times now in China, the educational slant on these machines has mostly been dropped. And games consoles are out and proud, showing their true colours, even if they were originally released 35 years ago. Well I hope you enjoyed exploring the SB926 or the Jackie Chan Famiclone as I like to call it today. Um, I've really enjoyed playing with it and I think it really proved that wherever you were in the world, whether it be the former Soviet Union, China or a sleepy British town, much like the one that I grew up in, whatever computer you had, we always found a way to game with it. It's just that come the 90s, Subor had learned the lessons from us in the 80s and they really played us. Well, in fact, they played our parents 
we always knew what we wanted from the start and that was games. And Jackie Chan and his family clone really delivered that for us. So I don't think Chinese people of a certain generation will mind me saying on behalf of them, thanks very much, Jackie. And I would like to also say a big thank you to Winston and Naomi for sending this over and for making this episode possible. Thanks guys. Take care, or as Winston would say, stay awesome.